Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Today on the show, I have something a little bit different and new and unique because today's guest has been a master level psychic medium and spiritual advisor for over two decades. He's helped change the lives of thousands of a lot of individuals that have turned to him for answers and guidance. He has natural intuitiveness, and he has an ability to provide emotional understanding. So a lot of people are really seeking answers to things that have left them baffled and curious. He has a weekly radio show, Angels and Answers, and it gives listeners a chance to connect with him from all over the United States and really anywhere uh, with the advent of the internet people can call him really and talk to him from all over the world. But he really has an opportunity to share a lot of things with a lot of people, not only on his radio program, but coming on shows like this and with things that he does with people in person. He discusses a variety of topics and we're gonna talk to him today about some of those things that he shares with others. But he has an enormous popularity that seems to be amazingly accurate amongst his listeners. And when you tune in to some of his shows, you'll find out that for yourself. He's performed spiritual shows throughout the United States at the Trump Plaza in Atlantic City, um, numerous times pleasing his audience uh, at Palace of Versailles in France. He's had seminars and workshops all over, and some of his clientele include very top named personalities, which he may share with us today on the show. We'll see. But he also does one-on-one -on -one private consultations and readings either in his office, over the phone, or even on location around the country. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome to the show Artie Hoffman. Welcome. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I am delighted to have uh, you. Yes, you're here by phone today. Unfortunately, we don't get to see you, but we will at some point. And so I'm really pleased that you're here. Oh, uh, it really is. It's it's a pleasure. And um, I love sharing, you know, beautiful thoughts uh, to people to help give people a different perspective on their life and life itself. And life is much simpler than what people make it out to be. Uh, you know, too many people make their lives much more complicated than what it is. And it's all about keeping life and keeping things simple. And the things that hurt people the most is expectations. And when you're trying to, uh, when you want what you want from other people, and things aren't happening as fast as you'd like, or things aren't happening in the way that you want from other people, it's about coming to a place of acceptance because when you're placing demands on situations or people and they're not able to pull through, it's not just their fault because they might not be capable or they might not just be willing. So it's up to you as far as what you're willing to accept. So if someone or something goes with the flow with you, then you roll with it. And if it's not, then it's time to bow out. But too many people get so upset because, like I said, uh, other people and other situations aren't pulling through for them. So as soon as you go with the attitude, it's like, you know, I basically tell everybody, I said, you got to become a Jamaican. No problem, Mom. I love it. I you love know? it. And it's so funny that you say that because one of the things I found within myself is the biggest challenge that I've had when it comes to things is placing my own expectations with what I would do, what I would think, how I'd react onto somebody else, and then being let down by that and having to come to realize that everybody has a different response in how they handle things. And I can't project that 
expectation onto them because I end up getting hurt. Right. And it's a natural reaction to be that way. And you let, and you leave yourself up for disappointment. Yes. You know? And so, you know, and, and uh, like I said, you know, uh, when you're, you know, you want what you want or, or when you do something for someone and if you're not getting the kind of response back, whether it be appreciation or whether it be reciprocation and you're not getting the kind of response back that you're hoping for or looking to get, then you have to understand that's just them. Are you doing it with conditions? A lot of people will help or love other people, but with conditions. Well, if you really love me, you'll do this. Or if you really care about me, you'll say this or say that. But if it's not within them, then it's up to you. Well, you know, maybe you shouldn't be with that person if they don't have it within them. Sometimes it just, by just mentioning it to them of what you appreciate, just to bring it to awareness because not everybody realizes what they're doing or not doing unless if you bring it to their attention. And then if you say that, well, they should know. Well, obviously they don't. And if they do know and they're still not, it means that they don't care. And so that's your answer to that relationship or the situation. And that's a good point. And it goes back to our expectations because we're expecting them to have an answer and we're expecting them to know. And we don't have all of the same wiring. We're each unique individual. So our response to something and how we show things is, is very unique to each one of us. And that is a very interesting point that you share because oftentimes we tend to place those expectations on other people and think that they, they should know or that, they, that there is this standardization in relationships or in communication, whether it be personal, interpersonal, or, or even business relationships. And there's cultures and subcultures and all of that ends up bringing about a different response into how people react to things. And so you're right, that disappointment and hurt is there. This is so interesting that we're talking about this. You know, the secret to life, in all seriousness, the secret to life is all of life is nothing more than a perception. Mm -hmm. Everything, everything is as big as it is. And everything, all the circumstances is as small as it is according to the energy of what you give that person or that situation. The bottom line is the situation, it still is what it is. It only is what it is according to the energy that you give it, whether, mm -hmm. oh my God, this really sucks, or you know what, that's not that bad, or I love it, or I hate it. It's, it, it still is what it is. It's just your perception of what it is. Very so true. What the, so what happens is that a lot of people allow themselves to get on everyone else's emotional stage. So when somebody is freaking out, about whatever they could be cursing at you they could be just cursing at a situation has nothing to do with you but so many people take so many things so personally based on the other person's energy or emotion so if you were just to observe the person going through their crap rather than being emotionally invested and just remain quiet you don't have to be emotionally invested just because they're in drama land doesn't mean you have to be in their drama land you're allowed just to sit back and just observe them, you and know, and it's your, true. and it's your choice and it's your choice whether you choose to allow this person to still be a part of your life. It's not necessary to hang on to every single relationship in your life. If they're no longer serving a good purpose to you, they might've served a great purpose to you before but now that life has evolved and things change and your values change or their values change, it doesn't mean that the two of you are supposed to be meant to, to stay together forever. And it's not necessarily a love relationship. It could be a personal relationship. It could be a business relationship. So at first you're on the same page and everything's great, but then your views change. Now your goal 
is to probably try to stay together, but that's when you try to compromise with one another. And if the two of you still can't see eye to eye after compromising, or one is being more bullying and you're like being submissive or you don't like this, or you, you find yourself having to always do what the other person wants you to do or what the situation is going to be. And if it doesn't fit in conjunction with you, then, you know, then it's time to bow out. And so what I tell a lot of people is that don't allow yourself to grow comfortable in the uncomfortableness because, yes. because it's a way of life. And that's yes. a big mistake that people have made. It is true. And oftentimes people, especially when it comes to very unhealthy relationships, people become so accustomed to the unhealthy behaviors when they get outside of that comfort zone it seems foreign to them and they run back to it and they stay in it even when they know that it isn't healthy but you're making a really valid point that those are things that like you've stated where it's these are signals that it's time to bow out because these are healthy it's toxic it's this is not a way to it's not con conducive to having a healthy life for you as an individual person where you can grow and move forward in things. So I really like what you're sharing because the way that you're um, really describing how this works is very simplified. Just like you shared at the very beginning of the show, things are simple and we make them a lot more complicated than what they need to be. Right. Um, I've been, um, you know, my parents were married for almost 60 years and they both passed away. And I told my mom, I said, you hung in there 58 years too long because most of the marriage was really very challenging and very difficult. Oh. And, you know, that was the generation where they stuck together no matter what. Mm hmm. And, you know, I saw, I saw my mother so miserable for so many years. You know, I did everything I can to make her happy. I have two older brothers. And overall, we were a pretty solid family. But it was like myself, my two brothers, and my mother, we were all on the same page. But my father just was, had a very difficult personality. And like I said, my brothers and I tried to give my uh, mother a way out to you know to be with us instead of being with him and she just you know was stubborn enough and she had her own egotistic stupid reasons why she chose to stay but she could have made life easier now I learned from that you know my, my, my mom taught me what love is and my dad taught me what love is not Ooh. And my, not that my dad was all bad my dad wasn't all all bad you know but um, I wrote him a letter one time thanking him for being my dad. And it was a sarcastic letter, but it was a truthful letter. And I said, thanks to you, I know what not to do. So that's why I've always treated women with as much respect as possible. And um, so, uh, and I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to say, well, what kind of a psychic are you if you've been through the circumstances of what I'm about to tell you? Because okay. I'm ready. I've been, mar I've been married. Huh? I'm ready for it. I've been, ready for it. yeah, I've been married three times and okay. I'm divorced three times. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, each marriage was a totally different kind of relationship. And I tried to make each one work, but, and I stayed in longer than I should have with each one. The first two marriages lasted 10 years each. And I had a child with the first one. And the third one lasted five years, each, five years. And I should not have been in that one at all. But you know what? I'm the type of person that when, you know, if you want to experience, see, I, I was with, I was with, you know, the girls that I was with at the time. And, and I really did try to compromise to try to make it work. But everyone had their own demands and expectations. And um, as much as I try to make it work, it just wasn't happening. And I just said, you know what? I'm not going to be like my mom and just stick in it because I said, you know, with the vows and that, you know, you're supposed to stick together forever. So there's two ways of looking again, perception. I'm going to show, share with you something about perception. You know, when you say your vows um, at the altar and you say till death do you part, 
according to the physical world, according to religion, till death be apart means I said my vows to my partner, I said my vows to God until we both physically die, till death be apart. Okay. The spiritual meaning behind the spiritual meaning behind till death do you part is when you if your heart dies in the relationship till death do you part because god I wants never no heard one that before what was that i had never even heard that before but it's a true interesting perception that is an interesting when your heart dies, because god wants us to be happy god wants everyone to be happy but a lot of times we choose not to be happy. We choose not to because of everyone else's expectations. If you allowed yourself to live more of a lifestyle that goes in conjunction with how you feel, how you live, then you'll be fine. It's the expectations that people put upon one another that screws up everyone's world. Yes. And in other terms people will say that you're trying to change them and in essence really it's you're placing expectations on them and that's kind of synonymous but um we don't look at it that way we just look at it in the terms of they really need to do this because this will be better but really you're saying i expect you to do this because it's better for me and it's not really better for them but you're right, you have to have a compromise and both parties have to be willing to do that. And even if you've been married, like you said, uh, you know, three times and divorced three times, I think that there's a lot of, that really exemplifies your ability, one, to follow through with different things like what we have talked about today, but it also, really shows how how the relationships work in the real world and oftentimes people do not want to admit to things and they will stay in a relationship that is unhealthy just so that they don't have to say well I've had this happen to me or I've been married this amount of times another thing is that um, sometimes they will go through a lot of relationships and not commit to one because they don't want to say that either. So it's really interesting in perception itself. You know, there was a, there was a shirt that I, that I once saw that was really funny, a decal shirt. And it said, why should I agree with you? Then we'll both be wrong. <laughs> oh, that is, I haven't, I hadn't heard that one either. But this is, these are really good. But the thing is, the biggest problem, the mm -hmm. biggest problem in relationships is, when people try to change one another because the, each one wants them to be how they are and not just accept them for who they are. Yes. And when I do reading, when I do readings, a lot of people will say, Art, should I stay in this relationship? Now, each, each reading is different. Each person is different. I don't give the same protocol answer to every person because it depends on the relationship. It depends on the energy. It depends on the love. One's in love, one's not. Uh, both aren't in love, but uh, people stay together because of emotional codependency or financial codependency. Mm -hmm. um, people, say, people say, well, because of the kids, I don't want to break up. So while they're with each other, while still with the kids, but, they're, but you're not teaching the kids any good values because you're teaching them, you settle, you settle, you settle, rather good. than doing what is right. Yes. You know, so to stay together because of the kids isn't a good thing. And when you stay in a relationship or if you're in a job that you're not happy with, but you're staying, that's what's known as golden handcuffs. Golden handcuffs is when you're in a job or a relationship that you can't stand, but the benefits are just good enough that keeps you there. It's golden handcuffs. That is a really good way to look at it because you are tied to that due to those benefits that you're receiving. And oftentimes people will stay in that golden handcuff just until they find somebody else. And then somehow no, they unlocked it. And there's, also, go. there's also a lot of times people put, 
their um, puts the puts the cart before the horse when it comes to relationships. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. I want the house. I want a partner. I want the kids. I want the family. You know what? You should want more than anything else in the world before you go after all those other things. You should want to be in love. And then you build from that. That is a beautiful... Because <laughs> if you don't... Mm -hmm. <laughs> because what happens is that if you attract that, which you can, you can attract a partner in your life. <clears throat> and you can attract the house and the kids and everything else. But if it's not built on a base foundation of love, your house and everything is going to come crumbling down, which is why the divorce rate is so sky high. Because people are so afraid to be alone. And I believe that it's worse to be alone in a relationship than it is to be alone on your own. Agreed. I agree 100%. I think it is a lot more healthy to be alone and really be able to identify with who you are. Also to know your boundaries too, so that you are not subjected to the other person's expectations either. And you don't allow that codependency, whether it's enabling or rescuing or any of the other things that fall into that category. But if you spend some time alone and really be able to get to love yourself, you're really able to, I think, embrace what you said. And that is being, first and foremost, being able to love someone else. Because all of the other things seem to have a ripple effect in, in just the natural course of events because of that initial love. Let me tell you something. When it comes to love, the trust better be there too. If you don't have trust, the love could be at a 10. But if you don't trust your partner, whether it be personal, loving, or business, if you don't have a partner that you don't trust, you don't have a relationship. That is a good point. A very because, valid good point. Because the trust has to be there. When you think you're caging, some, while you're trying to cage or trying to overly uh, look over someone else because you can't trust them, you're not just trying to cage them. Your whole life is caged because you're constantly walking around with a pit in your stomach waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for what else is going to be next that they're going to disappoint me with. So when you're constantly setting yourself up for that type of an expectation, then you're going to eventually create that to happen in the universe. Now, I know that this whole session so far seems like we're just talking about therapy and relationships and not spiritual or psychic, but the whole thing of this is based on, the reason why I'm talking, went in this direction is because the whole thing is based on spirituality and it's all based about love. And, you know, that's what, you know, psychic stuff is about, is about what I, what I personally do is that when somebody comes in to see me for a psychic reading, I could tell them what I see happening for them in the future. But if I see someone or if I feel somebody going through some really hard emotional times, it's not always the problem that's the problem, but it's how you're dealing with the situation is what the problem is. It's not always the problem that's the problem. So intuitively, I'll pick up on someone, how they're, how they're feeling, and I'll help rewire their way of thinking so that I could give those people back their power. And that's without them even saying a word. I'll just pick up on it. So there are times where somebody will come to me and say, Artie, what do you see with me in this relationship? Well, if you go out, if you continue to go out with them without any counseling, this is what's going to happen. If you go for counseling, this is what's going to happen. If you drop it off and you choose not to even deal with this relationship anymore, this is what I see happening. And they go, okay, so, well, what do you see happening? I said, I told you what to expect based on your free will and choice. You know, so that's up to you. I could tell you what I would do if I was in your situation. But when you're emotionally invested, it's hard to make all the right moves. Because when emotions are high, Smart and intelligence goes right out the window. Common sense goes right out the window when emotions are involved. Because your ego wants what it wants. 
And the ego, believe it or not, is stronger than the soul because the ego is so powerful that we tend to go with what we want. But it takes a very evolved person to go more according to your gut instincts and go to what feels right. But when you're doing things in life that doesn't feel right and you know you're going against the grain and you're in a relationship that you can't stand but you still choose to stay there or you're dealing with arguments with family and you still choose to make big, uh, small things a big thing where it's really not a big thing because it's your ego and you always have to be right. When you're holding on to all this anxiety, this is when your, your body starts to react. And this is when you start to become sick. You become physically sick because okay. you're not following through according to your soul. Your ego saying, no, stay there. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You've been doing this for years. You're okay. Ah, family, family tradition. You've always stayed there. Just stay. Just stay. You're okay. You're okay. But your soul is screaming, but I'm not happy, but I'm not happy. So then if you choose to keep on doing what's not right, then your body is physically going to start to get sick because your body will react according to your emotions. You know, that is something oftentimes, unless you're really paying attention, you will not recognize. And I will share something that I recently saw on social media from one of my friends. And that is the person had this rash, this red, bright, horrendous rash all over his entire body. And so he posted saying, hey, something's going on with me. You've got to check this out. This is unbelievable. So he goes to the doctor and they try to treat him. And there he is told basically that it's like third degree sunburn after all the tests. And it's ruled out that there's absolutely no findings of anything traditional medicine can find. He continues to go and the doctors told him, this is a 100% reaction to stress that you've been holding on to and your body is releasing. The, I have never seen anything like it, but what was really interesting is the comments in response to that, that other people were saying similar things that they've experienced. And I have a friend who has said, do you realize that I'm experiencing this? And I know this is a direct result because of this. This has gone on in my life and my body's releasing it. I've also heard that people who experience, say, acne on the jawline, that that's a direct response to stress that happened six weeks ago in their past that their body's just now releasing. So what you're saying to me doesn't seem foreign or odd. It really seems very valid that a manifestation of the things that are going on internally, the internal con a conflict between the two, like you said, the soul and the ego, really will release itself in some way. And sometimes not just physical characteristics. I think people can display that in a response also that comes out in a physical aggression, whether it be uh, verbal aggression or outright physical aggression towards someone else. Well, Crohn's disease and colitis is strictly caused by stress. Oh. So anyone who has Crohn's or anyone who has Crohn's or colitis, it's strictly caused by stress. There's not a physical ailment or what you ate. It is strictly caused by stress. So um, you know, it's about you know people. If you want to really, you know, and, and another interesting thing is like when people are trying to get pregnant. And there's nothing really physically wrong, but they can't get pregnant, can't get pregnant. They're trying, they're trying, they're trying, and trying, and trying. They can't get pregnant. And then all of a sudden, a, a majority, and I do mean a majority of the people who end up adopting after trying to get pregnant, they get pregnant right after they adopt because all the stress has gone out of their body of having a child. So they get pregnant shortly thereafter. 
but a lot of people stress themselves out from being pregnant because they want it so bad rather than just enjoying the art of making love. And then you have people who could pop them out like Pez and it's like no problem for them to get pregnant. Why is it so easy for others who can't even afford a child and other people who can give a child a really good life and they can't, you know, God only knows it's, you know, it's all karmic also. There's karmic reasons, but it's about trusting. It's about blind faith. And, you know, when I do my psychic work with other people and I'm giving people answers, everything I do is strictly based on blind faith. So, I mean, even though I give answers to the future with people, um, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm pretty amazed myself when people hit me with testimonials of, Artie, you predicted this was going to happen and that was going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And this came true and that came true. And I'm listening to them as if they're talking about someone else, not about me. Like I made these predictions because I'm like, really, really, really? You know, you know, it, it's like it hasn't even happened yet. But then I'm telling you what's going to happen before it happens. And, uh, you know, a stupid example is that, I mean, I've done this a thousand times, but a, a, a little example is that. I was talking to this one lady at giving her reading. I said, there's going to be a child born in your family on Valentine's Day soon. And she couldn't relate to anything because nobody was pregnant at the time. So she emails me about a year and a half later and she says, all right, you did a reading for me a year and a half ago. And you told me that there was going to be a, uh, uh, a child was going to be born in my family on Valentine's Day. And she goes, and my niece ended up getting pregnant and the, and the baby was born on Valentine's Day. And you said it was going to be a boy and it was a boy. It's like, you know, I, I'm just oh, wow. kind of my fantasy my thought, and it and it came right on. And I go, really? I go, oh my god, oh my god. Now, when people compliment me on certain predictions that have happened, each time I really don't take it like, ha ha ha. See, I told you so. You know, it, it's like no, because the angels and the Holy Spirit or your loved ones on the other side gave me all those answers. What I am is, I'm a I'm a person who has learned to develop my abilities to be able to connect to the other side so that they give me all the answers and then I share it with you. But then there are things where I just 100% know that this is what's going to happen. My strong intuitiveness. I know for a fact this is going to happen because a lot of times when I say things to people about the future, half the times I'm going to be honest with you, I feel like I'm just blowing smoke up people's butts. And then it turns <laughs> out that most of the, most of the things that I say, most of the things I say happen to be true. And, and, and it's like, really, 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 you know? So, and so there are times where. Well, I'm just well, wondering, Artie, do you sometimes get this revelation and you think that this is so far fetched, there's no way that I'm going to share this with that person. And then you do. And you just, I mean, it is so far out of the realm of what you think could even be related to that person. And then you find out later that, it was, I mean, it's just a hundred percent accurate. It's happened many a times. Mm -hmm. Like there's just no way, like, I don't even know. I, you know what? But I say, you know what? I'm just sharing with you my thoughts. And, there, and I'll give you an example of that where a girl, and this is just a small example. So I'm doing a reading for this girl. And I said to her, oh, I see you getting a puppy dog soon. She gives me a like a like a sarcastic smile, like no. And I go, I, yeah, I, I see you getting a puppy real soon. And she leans over the table and she looks at me in my face and she goes, Artie, I never owned a dog in my life. I don't own a dog, and I will never own a dog. I have no time for it. I own a beauty salon. There's no time in my life for a dog. Literally, one month later, she's on Facebook showing off her picture of her new puppy dog. <laughs> well, that's, it's pretty fascinating, man. I think that a lot of people wonder how that works. I mean, do you see a vision of images? Just, it's just a thought pass through. Do you get a feeling and is it exhausting for you? How is it to be able to be you? What do you mean? How is it able for me to be made? What do you mean? To be able to um, receive those messages in, um, I mean. Let me explain that. All right. Let me explain that. I'll explain that. So when I am, when I'm just um, 
let's say meditating in the moment. Most of my meditations, believe it or not, happen. I meditate most of the time while I'm in the car. I don't even know how I get from point A to point B. Uh huh. You know, I, I don't really pay attention. Believe it, it sounds it sounds very unhealthy. I don't even fully like I'm a. I, I pay attention, but I don't pay attention while I'm driving. I but totally I never cause accidents. Mm hmm. And you know, it's like driving a stick shift. You know, if you know how to drive a standard stick shift i could drive a stick shift no problem so when you're switching from second to third to fourth gear, you don't think about consciously think about when you have to shift you just automatic you just shift yes so it's like the same thing while i drive in while i'm doing reading because i've done countless hundreds and hundreds of readings maybe over a thousand readings no exaggeration while driving in the car because i'm in wow. that meditated zone while i'm in the meditated zone so what happens is that like right now, if you could picture what your bedroom looks like, can you picture what your bedroom looks like right now? Okay, so by you picturing what your bedroom looks like, that's how I see. So if you also picture a video of yourself, say the last time you were on vacation, okay. or if you picture, or if you have that video of you getting ready for this morning, all right, knowing that you were gonna talk to me with this interview, the video that you're creating in your head, you could recall that. So that's how I see. So they'll send me pictures. For you, it's a recall. For me, it's like unconditional. It's just in the moment. I'll see pictures. I'll see videos. Just like what you did. Now, there are times right now, right now, can you picture the sound of your mother's voice or your father's voice yes. in your head? Yes. That's how, All right. That's how I hear. So while I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I'll hear a voice in my head, how you could just hear whether it be your best friend's voice, your mother's voice, your father's voice, your kid's voice, you can recall their voices, what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. For me, again, it's unconditional. I'll just hear a voice in my head and they'll tell me. There are times where I hear songs. So I'll give you an example. The very first time this ever happened to me. I'm doing a reading for this one lady and, uh, and uh, she said to me, she goes, Artie, what do you see from my relationship? And in that moment, I heard a song in my head that's me and you, a part time lover. I'm hearing this song by Stevie Wonder. Okay. I said, he's cheating on you. I said, he's cheating on you. And he, he says, I think you're right. I said, no, I know I'm right because I'm hearing that song in my head. And whenever I hear songs in my head, I'm never wrong. I'm never wrong when I hear songs in my head. So whatever that song is about, that's what's going on with the person. That is very fascinating. And you've been able to really pinpoint that accuracy is even more fascinating you've been doing this for over two decades no 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 for over three decades you mean got that i've been doing it for 36 years over three decades this is how did you, when did you start recognizing that you were really intuitive believe it or not it was from a one weekend seminar at the edgar casey foundation in virginia beach I got a postcard sent to me in the mail when I was 27 and um, the, the postcard and I, I just happened to be going through it, you know, no big deal. And uh, I usually throw out my junk mail, but this one, I just happened to look through it and there was a postcard that said, how would you like to develop your psychic ability, intuitiveness, come to the Edgar Casey Foundation in Virginia Beach for this one weekend seminar. So I asked my wife, who was my wife at the time, I said, oh, this looks like it's interesting. I said, and I wasn't looking like it was the answer to my prayers. I just looked at it like, oh, this is interesting, you know, just for shits right. and giggles. Why not? So I said to my wife, I said, you want to go with me? She goes, I don't give a crap about that. She goes, you can go if you want. I'm not interested. So I went and uh, there was about 50 of us in this one large room from all different parts of the country. And nobody knew each other. And so they taught you how to get in that meditated zone. We would all be meditating and they had the spiritual music going and they were talking very serene, very softly and to get us to connect to the spiritual world, to the other side. And then they broke us up into groups and they said, whatever, whoever you're with, whatever signs you get, don't hold anything back. No matter how stupid it is, how crazy the sign is, the pictures, the messages, just share it with the person and don't judge it. And so I did. And people were telling me how accurate I was. So I went home. I got myself a deck of spiritual cards and I was reading for friends and family for a few years. And then after, um, you know, I, and people again were telling me how accurate I was. My friends and family were telling me how accurate I was with my predictions. So I got to a point in my life where I needed some extra cash fast. I needed some more money than I, what I was making. So I threw an ad in the paper 
and it said, you know, uh, you know, if I don't pull through, no charge. So 90% of the people paid me, and just by word of mouth, it just took off like a bat out of hell, my, my whole endeavor. And so oh. now it's 36 years, 36 years later, and I've read for over 28,000 people. This is absolutely amazing that um, you have... Or actually, wait, wait, 30 years, not 36, 30 years. 30 years. And you have also um, been a, an advisor to some very high-profile people as well. Yeah, and I have to keep it on the down low. <laughs> Got it. Okay. But that's, yeah. that's really interesting I, because you're very sought out. You do you do things by phone, you do things one-on-one, -on -one, and you, you do things publicly as well. So, um, yeah, no. I do, I do fundraisers. I do shows in front of large groups of people. I also do arty parties where I do it for people's in their private homes for their friends and family. You know, so I travel, people take care of the expenses when I travel. And then plus, you know, there's a fee involved. And then I, um, you know, and I do private sessions. I'm just as accurate over the phone as I am in person. And I'm in Woodbridge, New Jersey, which is, you know, by, uh, I'm about a half hour, 40 minutes away from New York City. Mm -hmm. And you also have a book out for those who want to learn more about what you do as well. Yeah, the book, yeah, the book is called Angels and Answers, and you can get it on Amazon.com. Angels and Answers will link to you about life from a spiritual, simplistic point of view. And it's a very, very easy read book, I promise you. And there's 12 angels and saints in there and it explains to you what their purpose to us is. So that when you want, so when you're in deep crap in your life, whether on any personal note, it, it tells you which angel is capable or saint is capable of helping you out through your time of need, whether it be about love, whether it be from losing a loved one or, or whatever. Okay. You know? So, and, and I, and you're going to think each person who reads this book, this is, I'm telling you, this is going to be your spiritual Bible. And you're going to think that this book was written specifically for you. There are some thoughts that are so deep and so beautiful, but yet so easy to understand from a, from a, a healthy spiritual concept and perception, you're going to go, Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. So okay. if you went to my website, so if you went to my website, artiehoffman.com, there's a link to, that you could press for Amazon and then it says angels and answers and you could order the book online. And uh, a lot of people have ordered a lot more than one book because it, it, it changed their lives so much that they ended up giving it away to their friends and family. Okay, so there's a lot of really good content in there. It's an easy read, and I've got a question for you about angels. Um, so there are people that say each person has their own guardian angel. Is this... Everyone has, everyone has at least two guardian angels with them 24-7. Okay. And all you have to do is ask for their help. So every day... I say this, I call upon my loving guardian angels. Thank you for bringing me, thank you for intervening into my life today. And thank you for bringing me peace, harmony, serenity, and balance. Thank you for sharing true love in my life. And thank you for all the prosperity of the world. In the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. So an angel could, could help you out in life only when you ask for their help. The only time an angel can intervene into your life without you asking is if you're in a do or die situation with your life and you're not meant to go, they will come and save you. If it's not your, if it's okay. not meant for you to go at that moment. Okay. So will a person be able, I've also heard that people are able to identify their angel or now, as you've said too, by name, is this true? Wait, say that again. That people can identify who their guardian angel is by their the the name. They'll they'll be able to say, okay, my the name of my guardian angel is yes, okay. And yes, okay. So it, is it something that's revealed to them 
in in a supernatural way or i i'm a little confused about yeah, it's like it's like being in a meditated yeah it's like a meditated you're a like in a meditation okay. you could get like i know I, i'm hearing the name Sarafina. when i'm listening to your voice i hear that one of your guardian angels name goes by the name of Sarafina. okay now an angel is an angel and now, a lot of people, just because your loved one passed away, whether it be your parents or your kids or your lover or whoever, it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that they're your angel. I mean, they're your angel as far as emotionally, yes, they're your angel. But physically, literally, your angel is an angel. It's not a loved one who has passed away. An angel is an angel. A spirit guide is a spirit guide. An archangel is an archangel. The Holy okay. Spirit is the Holy Spirit. It's different. You know, it's like calling your parents Santa Claus during the holiday season. Are they really it. Santa Claus? No, but they're the ones who give you the gift. That's really interesting because there's a lot of confusion on that. And I, I was wondering, so does your See, book... Now you're clarified. <laughs> <laughs> your book's going to share a lot about this and bring a lot of clarity for a lot of people who may be confused and uh, don't understand that. Because you said there's 12. So well, there's a lot more than 12. I just happen to pick out 12. Got it. Okay. This is, this there's is a lot really, more than 12. They're just, this is really fascinating. So let me ask you, Artie, where are you going to be next? What have you got going and um, what other types of projects do you have upcoming so that the audience can look for you? Well, every Sunday night at 8 PM Eastern time, I do a free, uh, I do a free Facebook live show where I read people for free. I connect to their loved ones, get messages from their loved ones who passed away, uh, even their pets. Um, I also give people psychic answers about what's going on in their life, their future, um, you know, but I allow each person only one question. Now, can I reach every single person? No, because I get over a thousand questions or about a thousand questions per okay. show. And I try, and I have an assistant that's with me. Her name is Carrie, and she reads the question. So while I'm on Facebook Live, I can't read everything as it's going by. I just look at the camera so I can focus and meditate into the spiritual world. So Carrie, my assistant, will be right next to me, and she'll read all the questions. She'll randomly pick the questions, and then she'll read it off to me. And then I look at the camera, and I answer the people their questions. And you just have to excuse me, they just have to keep their questions very specific. Don't say, okay. how's my future? You know, or what do you see in my relationship? You know, you, you, do, what do you see in my love life? You have to tell me, well, are you single? Are you looking for new love? Or are you in a relationship and you're going through hard times? Like be specific on what it is that you want to know. Do you want to know? I, I have health issues. What do you see for that? Well, tell me, where's, you know, maybe tell me, where's your pain? You know, I've been having lots of headaches or I've been having this or I've been having that. I'll give you a perfect example. I'm also a medical intuitive. So uh, a lady oh. calls me up or uh, a lady calls me up um, or not, not calls me up, but, you know, calls into the Facebook live show and she types in, she goes, my horse has not been eating and has been laying down most of the time. And um, the vet does not know what's wrong with the horse. Can you please give me sight? Now, granted, I am no veterinarian. I have no college degree. And I tuned into the spiritual world. And I said to her, the horse is having major problems with its intestines. And the intestines, the, the, where, where it's not, the food of the horse is not digesting properly so that when it goes from the stomach into the uh, in, intestines or vice versa, whatever, where the stomach and the, and the, and the intestines are meeting, there's, a, there's like um, a major problem there. It's very sensitive, it's, a, it's, it's, it's inflamed. I said, but it's so badly damaged that it would need surgery. I said, I feel like that's where the problem is. And I told the lady, I said, look, I'm no veterinarian or doctor. I said, but this is what I'm picking up. So she told the vet and the vet looked right exactly where I told them. And this happened just a couple months ago. And the veterinarian said the horse has a, it gave it some kind of a name, has a major problem right in the area, right where the intestines meet the stomach. And the horse was not savable, unfortunately. And they had to put the horse down, but that's exactly where the problem was. 
So, that, you know, that's I, pretty interesting. So I tell everybody, I said, look, I'm no doctor. I'm not a veterinarian. I'm not a lawyer. I'm better than them. <laughs> no, <laughs> and, and the thing is, is, is that the, it's that the spiritual world just cuts right through all the chase and just goes right into it. And I, and I share with it, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, but, you know, granted, you know, you can't put any claim on me because, you know, this is me speaking. Well, or you said this and that wasn't happening, you know, that wasn't happening or that didn't happen. And, you know, no psychic is ever 100 percent right ever. You know, there are what's known as psychic probabilities. Because okay. sometimes just by knowing it, just by knowing information in advance, you do have the ability to, to change things. But then again, come hell to high water, there are certain things in life. You're going to experience this no matter what. So what I do is I prepare people to deal with whatever it is they're about to be dealt with. That makes sense. So it's not, you know, so, but you do also have the opportunity to make healthy changes based on the information I just gave you. This, so it doesn't have to happen. Yes. This is really a good point because oftentimes we aren't prepared and, that foundation that you lay and also the, like you mentioned earlier in the show, the ability to guide someone down a healthier path, those things are really important. And I know that we're running close on time, so I would like you to share your contact information again and uh, let the audience be able to connect with you. Thank you. If people want to reach me for... Uh, whether it be a show, I do motivational speaking. Uh, if people want to uh, contact me for a private reading or a private party, and it could be in person or over the phone, whatever, um, my number is 732 778 7173. That's 732 778 7173. Or you could email me, Hoffman at gmail. Or you can go to my website, BartyHoffman.com, and I have a lot of videos up there. And I have an Instagram that I do every morning. It's Artie Hoffman, and I also have one, Angels and Answers. Um, there's inspirational messages on my pages uh, to start off each and every day. And it's, um, it's really, it's, like I said, I like to start off everybody with like a positive thought or what's going to happen for the day. So... Um, and that's what that's all about. And like I said, uh, I do Facebook Live every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And it's called Angels and Answers. And it's literally an international show. Yes. And, uh, I had no idea that it was going to be an overnight success. I had no idea that it was, that was going to be seen around the world. I thought it was just locally in New Jersey. And then people were calling in to my show the first night I ever did it a couple of years ago. And they said, hello from Ireland and hello from South Africa. Hello from England. I said, oh my God, hello from California. I was saying, oh my God, I didn't realize like this reached like everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I want to thank you pretty so, cool. so much, Artie, for being here today. And I, I wish that we could have seen you um, via video, but maybe next time I'd love to have you come back on the show and I appreciate everything that you're doing, especially to help people have healthier and happier lives. Cause I think this is very, very important. And everything that you talked about today, the perceptions being our reality, the, um, the expectations that we place all of the things that you shared even including in the spiritual realm between our ego and the spiritual world and the conflict there there's been a lot of very valuable information and i know that it's going to help the audience that i have here and i hope that they have an opportunity to connect with you so thank you so much for being with us oh it's such a pleasure i just want to share before we go i want to share something very important with the audience if you ever go see a reader outside myself, <laughs> but if you ever go see a, a reader and if anyone ever tells you that somebody put a curse on you, um, just okay. walk out because the only person who's putting a curse on you is that person who just told you someone's putting a curse on you because um, 
just because you're, you're going to see them, it's like, of course your love life isn't that great or your business situation isn't that great or, or you're having problems. So that's why you're there to see them. So there are certain people who will use this gift to manipulate you and someone put a curse on you. So therefore for 2000, 3000, $20,000, I will remove the curse and give me a piece of jewelry and I'll say a blessing, blah, 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 blah. These oh. people are fraud. Oh. Anyone who said that, if anyone ever tells you that, Oh, I see you, uh, you're going to die. At any, you're going to die at the age of 33. Or you're going to die at this age. There's no, positive purpose for telling anybody that they're going to die you know unless if somebody's already on their deathbed it's the only time i will ever mention that uh, about a death is if somebody's already on their deathbed and it's inevitable so therefore you want to prepare yourself or help the other person during this these few moments that they have here on earth but if basically you're pretty healthy and somebody's predicting how long you're going to live i mean i tell people i see you have longevity in your life that's different because you're, you're going to live for the next 20, 30, 80 years. But, you know, when somebody says, oh, you know, you only got, uh, you know, another six months or eight years or three years, it's, it's, it's bull crap. Just walk out. That, that's, that's not a good reader. That's really a good point. And people really need to be aware of being taken advantage of and frauds. There's a lot of scams going on in the world today. And one of the biggest things that scam artists now are taking advantage of are people who are vulnerable in their interpersonal world. And so whether it be by going to a reader or somebody that's calling to um, or contacting them via social media or a dating site, they're preying on that vulnerability. And I appreciate you mentioning that to the audience because people do need to be alert. And one of the things that, this show does is really make people aware so that of things and resources. We talk about things that bring a way for people to make their life happier, healthier, and moving in a positive direction. So I really appreciate everything that you said today, and especially that final tip that you've been able to leave with all of the audience. And again, I hope that they have an opportunity to connect with you. They can go to rdhoffman.com. And if you'll give out your telephone number again. Oh, it's 732-778-7173. And just to finish off what I just said, it's like if you're, say, 23, 35, and then somebody tells you, oh, you're going to die at the age of 42, what happens just by them planting that seed in your brain, you could create this. If you believe in what that person just said, you could create this to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, True. you know, your body starts to build up to that. So once you, once people have said to me, you know, already, you know, somebody told me I was going to die at this age, which is like maybe the next year. I said, don't worry. I just left the death sentence off you. You got many years ahead of you. All of a sudden it changes everything. You have a really good point there. And oftentimes we don't think about the self-fulfilling prophecy. In fact, many people don't even know that it exists and that we manifest these really negative things or situations because we have become so focused on. Oh yeah, it 100% exists. Yes. Yeah, 100% exists. Well, thank you so much. I really so, uh, hope that we have a chance to have you back on the show. I'm really excited about the things that we've talked about today because I really can see that there's going to be some changes and that it's going to help many, many people. So thank you again, Artie. Yeah, the power of life and the power of love really is in your hands. And just always remember, it's not always if it's within God's will, so it, so it shall happen. If it's within your will, then it's within God's will. So take responsibility of your choices and your actions. And if you want something bad enough to happen, then if you project yourself out there with your actions and with your emotional heart, then God's will is your will. And Thank from my you. mouth to God's ears, from my mouth to God's ears, may God bless you, Rebecca, and may God bless everyone who's listening with lots of love, health, happiness, and serenity and prosperity. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for tuning in today. I appreciate you very much. And I ask that you share this with your friends, your family, your colleagues, people that you know, and those that you don't. We definitely want to help people move in the direction 
that is forward, healthy, and happy. Stay tuned for another episode of Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Thanks for watching.